Our text is the Gospel from John chapter 6, in particular the end where the 5,000 men say, this is indeed the prophet who is coming into the world. Then Jesus, knowing that they were about to take him by force and make him their king, withdrew and went up a mountain by himself alone. In the name of our Lord, fellow redeemed. The church is a non-profit organization, but she cannot live without the prophet. Please don't groan, I am not done with that pun. It will come up again in this morning's message more than once. Resting on the green grass of Galilee, 5,000 well-fed men get it right. This is indeed the prophet who is coming into the world. That's the prophet promised by Moses, a prophet like himself. Like Moses, Jesus will speak God's word faithfully. Then he will lead God's people out of their slavery and feed them as they travel through a wilderness toward their promised land. Five thousand men confess the truth about Jesus, but almost immediately turn that truth into a lie. For they try to make the wrong kind of prophet out of Jesus. Sitting on that green grass, they begin to count and conspire. You know, we are almost equal in manpower to one Roman legion, and we have the advantage of hiding in these familiar hills. Let's draft the prophet as our leader. Surely it's time to restore Israel to her earthly glory. As soon as Jesus knows what they're thinking, he withdraws to the mountain by himself. And right after our text, he makes the disciples ship out so they will not be infected by the crowd's hunger for the wrong kind of prophet. Now, what are we looking for in a prophet? For a while, when Jean and I lived down near St. Louis, I tried to watch three late-night weather forecasts at once. I said I was seeking the most accurate. I settled for the most optimistic, the one that offered the coolest summer days or the fewest inches per snowstorm. That's an illustration of the kind of prophet desired by every old Adam and old Eve. Wouldn't it be wonderful if each of us could hire a flawless forecaster? Someone to show us a risk-free investment strategy with a guaranteed 10% annual yield? Someone to reveal the path that will get our farms through these very uncertain times? Someone to show the next generation which career will surely be the most rewarding 30 years from now? How disturbing when the prophet tells us to sell everything and follow him. When he says, do not labor for the food which perishes. Do not lay up for yourselves treasure on earth. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we each had a guide to guarantee perfect personal relationships? Perfect for me, of course. Our guide would show us when we should be Minnesota nice and when we have to be New York assertive. He would show us how long we can, how far we can push people before they push back how long we can ignore neighbors in need before they rise up and riot, 
How disturbing when the prophet comes and says, love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you. When he tells disciples, whoever would be great among you must be your servant. And when we're beset by sickness or sorrow, by crisis or confusion, how tempting to fall for the false prophets who tell us to expect a miracle, to expect that God will fix things exactly as we want Him to, if only our faith is strong enough. What a challenge when the prophet tells us in quite a matter-of-fact tone of voice, in the world you will have tribulation. So when we try to make the wrong kind of prophet out of Jesus, he will do as he did in our text. He will withdraw, leaving us to the tender mercies of all the false prophets who plague this present age. They're a horde of locusts on the airwaves, false prophets, both liberal and conservative, who promise a heaven on earth if only we follow their policies. They're termites inside God's kingdom. False prophets who tell us how to make the church a cozy club for our kind of people. Or others who tell us to make her a giant religious supermarket, offering folks whatever they think they need. It would serve us right if this prophet whom we try to use would let us follow the false prophets all the way down their paths of everlasting death. Thank God, Jesus does not withdraw to forsake us, but to save us. In our text, he climbs an unnamed mountain by himself alone. One year later, at the next Passover, Jesus climbs the mountain called Calvary. There he is completely alone. There he does the prophetic action foreshadowed in our first lesson. Just as Moses used the blood of a sacrifice to seal the covenant between God and Israel, Jesus offers his own blood to reconcile his father to the whole human race. This is indeed the prophet who came into the world, the Lamb of God who died that we might live, and who rose again, the prophet who still comes into our age. He comes with disturbing words, but chiefly he comes with the word. I forgive you all your sins. Forgive you for trying to use me. Forgive you for falling for the lies of false prophets. Forgive you for anything and everything else. This is indeed the prophet coming to us today beneath bread and wine, coming to communicate his forgiveness and new life with his true body and blood. In the Gospels appointed for the next three Sundays, the prophet will unfold the rich meaning of this coming. How he is the bread of life. How all who eat his flesh and drink his blood have everlasting life. And this is the prophet coming to us through pastors and teachers, as Paul told us in our second lesson. Through these gifts, the prophet keeps us on guard against politicians who promise a heaven on earth, against preachers who promise a crown without a cross, against any other false prophets whose lies blow us about like little boats on a big lake. Listen to the truth Jesus speaks through his gifts of faithful pastors and teachers. Listen faithfully and grow up in every way into Christ. And this is the prophet who is coming to empower our discipleship. Just as Jesus asked the twelve to help him feed the five thousand, he sends us forth today to 
feed hungry neighbors, to do so as farmers or in any godly vocation, to feed by spending time with troubled or sorrowful neighbors, to feed as we use our talents to build up the body of Christ in this place. In these ways and many more, we show the world that the prophet is bringing his kingdom into this age. In today's gospel, Philip and Andrew almost cheat themselves out of the joy of helping Jesus. They tell him why it can't be done. Wonder how five dinner rolls and two sardines can possibly go far enough. Jesus simply takes what they have, thanks his Father for it. Then he tells the disciples to give it away and make sure that it does go far enough. This week, some of us will again tell the Lord why we can't afford to invest any more in serving the neighbor. Others will wonder how much good their small gifts can do in a world with such huge hungers and hurts. With other doubts and excuses, we will all cheat ourselves out of the joys of discipleship. Thank God the Spirit of Jesus is going to gather us again next Sunday so that he, the prophet can speak forgiveness to those failures. Then as in John 6 and as in a few minutes, we offer Jesus what we have and thank him, join Him in thanking His Father. We give it away in Jesus' name and trust that He will make it go far enough. This is indeed the prophet who is coming into the world. God grant that today this non-profit organization has again heard His word profitably. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen.